Um, also, if you 
are one that is more susceptible to invading viruses, um, don't come to church. Don't go out. I know it's going to be really hard, uh, but that's what the CDC is encouraging. Um, so think about that for yourself. But that's what the CDC is encouraging, is that if you're susceptible to viruses, don't come out. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me or anyone on the council ask them, okay? We are moving into this together. As I said, this is going to change daily. Um, as all of my pastor friends have put it, we did not take a class on a pandemic in seminary. So, I'm sorry, but none of us know what we're doing on this. Um, so, we're living into this as church together. So, with that, I've said a lot already this morning. Let us turn our hearts and minds to worship, beginning with confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people. Turning us from our sins, live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <laughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we are back with sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in God's word and deed. I love you, Adam, and I love you, Adam. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us.
God, the fountain of living water. You quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Oh. 
For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then, his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or, why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. He said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, and my food is a harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reapers are already receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that a sower and a reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that you, that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite the children for the children's message. Yeah, it's kind of confusing sometimes. So, bad things. 
friends have it. Um, unfortunately, people die. Um, when my mom, she died seven years ago. And, um, you know, and that's sad, right? Thank you. That's really sweet of you to say. But good things happen too, right? But amidst all of the good and all of the bad things that happen, who's always there for us? Your parents? Exactly. God? Yes. Yeah. God is always there for us, right? So, so, so even God is with Joe right now, right? Even though he can't give a children's sermon, he's really sad about that. God is with him. And so when my mom dies, I know that God is with me. When I fall, when I fall for God, God is with me. And in everything that's going on in the world today, God is with us, always. Offering us love and reminding us that things will be okay. Because God has us. So, that's what our text from Romans was about saying. Was that even though bad things happen, God is with us in all of it. Right? Yeah. I know that's very profound. And there's nothing you can do about it. Bad things are going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. Except for how you react to it, right? Exactly. So, right. Exactly. Ask God to help. Right, exactly. And so how do we ask God to help? Prayer. Exactly. Yeah, prayer. You know, it's sometimes song, too. Because I think songs are prayers. I love songs. Oh, you don't know if I was Gino? Yeah, I'm singing today. The songs, um, the song that the men's prayer sang was a really good one. And then also the, our first hymn of the day today, I thought would be a really good prayer. Give me Jesus. You know, at every point of our lives, give us Jesus. Because that's who we rely on when things get tough. Um, so, as long as I have you guys here, um, so happy news from our congregation. Do you guys know Randy Koenig? You know Randy. She's one of your mom's friends. And Eric. And Aria. Do you guys know Aria? Yeah, I know Aria. Yeah. So guess what? Little Aria became a big sister on Friday. Yeah, she's a big sister now. To Everly. Yeah. So so Everly Wynn Koenig um, was born on Friday. So that's good news. Very good news. Everly. Her name is Everly. Everly. Yes. 